So uh, good morning, everyone. This is Supervisor George Holman, and we're about to begin our uh, webinar on reopening Clarkstown, a helpful guide for small business. We're just going to give it a few moments to allow um, uh, folks to be able to get on in. Uh, we have um, currently 88 attendees. We've got a jam-packed program uh, for you this morning where we're going to really speak about um, um, what you need to know from uh, the regulatory aspect to be able to reopen your business. We're going to give an overview of the situation as um, currently presented uh, here in Rockland County. And uh, we've got some great presenters from our town attorney uh, through uh, Tom Morley from the Small Business Association, our building inspector, Eric, um, as well as folks from the chamber, Nanuet in New City, Suzanne Faris, uh, and uh, Roxanne uh, Perone. And finally, our town planner, Joe Simos, uh, who's going to give um, an overview of a um, of number of things. So before we get going, and we'll just give it a few minutes, we're going to allow people to uh, to come on in. And um, we will be taking questions. And as I said, there was a lot of interest in this uh, webinar. And um, you know, uh, the webinar uh, will probably go about 50 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes of the presentations. We'll be taking questions and questions again at the end. Um, so again, thank you all for joining us with Supervisor George Holman. And um, we'll just give it another moment before we actually uh, uh, begin, just to allow a few more folks to come on in. Uh, we had well over 120 people pre-registered and uh, attending numbers is, is kind of clicking up. Okay, so um, um, I think we're pretty close to our uh, our intended number, so let's get started. Um, again, thank you all for uh, joining. This is Supervisor George Holman, and uh, as I said, uh, this uh, is a important webinar: reopening Clarkstown, helpful guide for small business. I'll provide um, I'll provide a, a very brief overview and, and intro. Uh, before I do that, I want to thank a number of individuals uh, who really kind of helped put this um, uh, together. The, uh, quite the uh, real reason for this webinar, obviously, um, there's been an awful lot of questions my office has been fielding uh, from residents, from businesses, uh, and uh, we have an exceptional relationship with our local chambers of commerce, uh, the Nanuet and the City Chamber of Commerce, who are both participants. And during several of our uh, interactions during the shutdown, uh, the local chambers really asked, you know, was, was there something that the town could do um, that would really bring together some information for our local businesses so uh, they could really look to figure out what they need to do in order to be able to open up whenever the governor says uh, that Rockland and the region has met the metrics. So we started uh, planning this about three weeks ago. Um, we've uh, tasked a number of key staff within town hall to be able to put this together. I do want to thank uh, some folks in my office, uh, Rob Alberti, who um, uh, who put together the PowerPoint uh, that uh, will be available during this presentation. Um, I certainly want to thank uh, uh, Lauren Daly uh, as well, uh, all of our IT staff, uh, you know, who are uh, floating around behind the scenes here to make sure that this goes seamlessly, uh, Brendan, Roy, and Chris, um, and um, under uh, the leadership of Pat Watson. So I want to thank them for all their assistance. And then again, to all of our presenters, um, we've got some great presenters, uh, Eric, our building inspector, um, we have Leslie Kahn, our town attorney, uh, we have Joe Simos, our town planner. Uh, we have Tom Morley from the Small Business Association, as well as um, having uh, Susan uh, Faris and, um, uh, from the Nanua Chamber of Commerce representing the chamber, and uh, Roxanne Perone representing the New City Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and as I said, there'll be an opportunity for, um, uh, there will be an opportunity for, um, um, uh, for questions uh, throughout the uh, presentation. And uh, uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, like to kind of, uh, uh, take those as each presenter moves forward. So just um, uh, in short, um, where are we now and where do we stand? You know, as you know, Rockland is part of the Mid-Hudson region. There are actually 10 regions in New York State. Uh, the governor has actually put together uh, a number of, um, uh, a number of um, criteria, and uh, we'll kind of go through what those criteria are for reopening. Um, and Again, out of the regions, out of the 10 regions, uh, currently seven of them are open with phase one. And uh, Leslie Kahn will actually go through 
uh, fairly um, uh, specifically uh, some of the criteria and uh, and uh, the metrics that are going to be required for us to uh, be able to reopen uh, for small business. Uh, again, um, you know, uh, where we stand right now, Rockland in the Mid-Hudson region is not prepared to uh, uh, reopen, although we're inching closer day by day. Uh, there's a series of, of, of metrics uh, that we must meet. Um, as you see up on the screen, uh, the criteria really allows for a, a phased opening, uh, and that phased opening uh, really uh, focuses in on the infection rate if it's sufficiently low. Uh, if the healthcare system has the capacity to absorb the potential, uh, potential resurgence of cases, um, if uh, there's sufficient testing that's in place, and if there's a robust uh, contact tracing program uh, in place to be able to prevent the spread of the virus. Um, so um, um, we will move forward at this point. I'd like to turn, um, uh, turn to the next slide, Rob. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure uh, I'm seeing that we have a comment from um, from one of our uh, folks um, saying that they're having uh, trouble with the audio. Um, so um, if um, I think that might be on your end because um, uh, we're having other folks that are saying they don't have an issue with the audio. So um, you may want to check the, the sound on your computer. Um, so we'll go on to the last, you know, basically the last uh, slide that I'll be. Uh, uh, be presenting is just give an overview. You can kind of see the regions and the metrics. As I said, uh, the three regions that are not um, uh, that are not yet open. Uh, Rockland uh, is part of the Mid Hudson region. That's Rockland, Westchester, Orange, Ulster, uh, Putnam, Dutchess, and Sullivan counties. Um, that's the Mid Hudson region. Uh, Long Island is also not yet open, and New York City is not yet open. Um, the governor has placed a, a very um, specific uh, uh, plan out there uh, that um, um, we are looking to present now. And we're going to move forward with uh, turning it over to Leslie Kahn, our town attorney, uh, who will actually go through some of the metrics. What I'm excited about with this is that we're going to have a, um, uh, some real uh, uh, great suggestions for folks on this call. Um, and uh, you'll see some very specific recommendations uh, and you'll see the guidelines that the businesses will have to uh, be able to uh, meet to be able to open up uh, starting with phase one. We're hopeful that phase one uh, could come as soon as uh, the next couple of days. Um, and um, and um, as soon as it comes, we'll be prepared uh, with our town staff to be able to assist. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Leslie Kahn, uh, who will, uh, who will uh, move forward with the presentation from this point. Again, if you have questions, please type them into the box and each Speaker will take them as they come. But Leslie, if you take it away. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to first start by saying what can we do today in Rockland County? What can be open? So essential businesses are allowed to be open. And non-essential businesses are all also allowed to be open. Um, and the guidelines for the non-essential businesses is located on the Empire State Development Corporation. So non-essential businesses, uh, such as retail establishments, are allowed to be open to the extent that they can have one person inside the uh, establishment taking orders via telephone, payment via telephone, and having an employee deliver uh, whatever has been ordered to a delivery location. That is allowed. Uh, so I just wanted to be clear that if you are a retail business and you have, such as the flower shop uh, is a good example, uh, that, that's a very good business that can do business over a telephone and then have a delivery person deliver the flowers to wherever it needs to go. Jewelry stores, again, uh, maybe if somebody wanted to order a piece of jewelry uh, with somebody taking, um, you know, an order over the phone, they can send pictures back and forth. That could be something that is, even though it's considered non-essential by the state, uh, some businesses can still operate that way. Uh, restaurants and bars with takeout and curbside pickup and delivery is still allowed. Uh, landscaping, gardening is, is currently allowed. And some recreational uh, activities, such as drive and movie theaters, parks, uh, open spaces, but you have to make sure you maintain uh, social distancing. Uh, tennis is allowed, golf is allowed, things like that. Uh, kayaking, uh, canoes on a, a, or a rowboat is, is currently allowed. Like the supervisor said, we're hoping our region can open within the next few days. So with that, um, 
Rob, do you want to go to the next slide? Thank you. Okay, so uh, our region will open hopefully in the next few days. We're going to start with phase one. So the governor has outlined what businesses are under phase one. That's construction, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting, retail, again, curbside and in-store pickup, uh, and drop-off, manufacturing, and wholesale trade. So uh, I'll, I'll probably focus mostly on retail because I think that that's probably most uh, current to our, our county and our town right now. What that would mean is uh, retail businesses, again, can open up. You can have 50%. Well, let me just um, backtrack. Rob, why don't you go to the next slide? So it, I'm just going to talk. So in preparation uh, of opening, which everybody should be doing this now, before you can open under phase one, there's two requirements that the state has uh, put forward. One is there is um, on this website, New York Forward, if you just go, go to Google NewYorkForward.com, it will pop up. And on the left-hand column, you'll see uh, the businesses that are allowed under phase one. So for instance, if you are a retail business, you can click it and there is guidance uh, that are put forward. It's a few pages. Uh, all businesses are required to read the interim guidance on reopening. And at the bottom of that, there is an affirmation that needs to be signed and sent back. That could all be done electronically, that you have affirmed that you've read the guidance that the, the state has put out regarding your business. Um, that's step one. Step two is all businesses must, Rob, do you wanna to go to the next page? Step two would be that every business is required to complete a health and safety plan. There's a template online that the state has put out that you can use if you want. If you don't wanna use that template, you certainly can use uh, your own template, create your own template. So things that must be covered according to the state is how you're going to have your employees uh, social distance, which means a maximum of, of uh, at least six feet distancing. Uh, there should be no more than 50% of the employees that are allowed under the certificate of occupancy. So for example, if your store is allowed to have 100 uh, employees, you're now only allowed to have 50. And the plan is you have to figure out how you're gonna maintain social distancing if possible uh, within your store. If you, uh, you also have to have provide PPE, meaning masks and gloves to the employees if applicable. Uh, hand sanitizer, things like that, how you're going to uh, clean uh, after each shift. That's all part of the safety plan. And, and the state has uh, identified the areas that you, you must um, do in terms of the safety plan. So the safety plan has to be posted someplace within your retail establishment. Uh, it does not have to be uh, filed uh, with, you don't have to send it to the state, it just has to be in the business. Uh, so if an inspector from the local health department or state health department or uh, some sort of enforcement agency like would like to see it, you have to be able to provide it. Um, again, just part of the safety plan, if you're a, a business, for instance, that has a lot of uh, people working in, 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 in um, different tables or sections. Again, if you can't have them six feet apart, figure out maybe how uh, you can have some sort of divider or maybe a plexiglass or something like that. Part of the safety plan also is screening. So that's health screening. So it, what that means, uh, and again, it's this is all on the New York Forward website, but generally you have to be able to provide uh, maybe a manager or somebody before every shift might want to call the employees an hour before they're supposed to come in and say, how are you feeling? Do you have any symptoms? Um, have you been in contact with anybody that had COVID-19? Things like that. You're supposed to keep a log of daily uh, of, of that you've called each employee and, and just keep a log and if uh, keep a log, that, that will keep it like that. Um, Rob, you want to do the next screen? Uh, I just want to just go back to the, the screening. So if somebody, as an employer, employee says that they might have uh, symptoms or has tested positive for COVID, 
you're man mandated to report that to our local health county health department. Um, and then there's issues about when that employee can come back and the county health department has following the CDC guidelines. So I would recommend that you just contact the local health department and follow the CDC guidelines, which also can be found online. Okay, so we're now at the next slide. So just, I, there's a couple pictures of examples of how you might want to um, reconfigure your business in terms of maybe putting circles that might uh, say where six feet apart is, one way uh, markers, you know, up one aisle, down another aisle. I know that could be a little bit confusing to maybe your customers as I have sometimes have a hard time following the markers. Um, other ideas might be uh, you maybe institute some sort of um, PayPal or Apple Pay so that your employees are not taking uh, cash from customers. Other um, things you might want to be able to post, uh, depending on the egress and ingress of your store, one way in and one way out so you don't have multiple people coming in and out of the same door. Uh, if you're a restaurant, facing tables, once restaurants are able to open and have uh, dining inside or outside, having tables separated uh, by six feet. Uh, other things, maybe if it's nice weather, keep windows open so that the air circulates. If you're a restaurant, maybe have paper lists or, or paper menus that can be thrown away. I'm just giving you some examples of that how it might be helpful. Rob, next slide. Okay, maybe not. Next slide. Um, just, okay, so here are just some, some ideas that, that the town has come up with. Posting menus on your website, uh, non-communal condiments, uh, pay at table terminals. I know at the airports you sometimes see uh, pay at table term terminals. Uh, cleaning is obviously uh, very important. Uh, drive-in parking lot. So if you have, maybe you could designate one or two spots outside your restaurant that say curbside pickup, uh, things like that. Uh, reservations, that, that would be key uh, also to pick up food so that we don't have, you know, 500 people in a parking lot waiting to pick up their food. I also just want to mention that the um, town is, the town board, I don't know if you want to, the town board is uh, considering, hopefully will adopt a resolution uh, next week, which would allow uh, expanded outdoor seating for restaurants. There would be a permit application. The town board is, is reviewing it to see if that would be adopted, but hopefully that would help our local restaurants to add some tables. Um, and, 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 just, and just just to that point, uh, um, the, town, the town board and I are actually moving forward with a number of initiatives that, that we'll speak about here today. Uh, we'll be bringing in an economic development coordinator um, within the next week, we'll be working closely with the chambers and small businesses. We'll also be moving forward with um, moving forward with this uh, uh, relaxation of regulations uh, that uh, our town attorney has just spoken about. That will allow for uh, businesses to be able to um, uh, to be able to utilize sidewalks and parking space. In addition to that, um, we're going to emphasize today, and our building inspector will speak about our event permits. Uh, that uh, small businesses can already avail themselves of, and we're looking at making some tweaks and changes to that uh, where any small business, any retail business within the town will have the opportunity um, to be able to uh, utilize outdoor space uh, for things such as sidewalk sales, uh, for uh, seating in the parking area. Again, you'll have to comply if you're a food establishment with, uh, with uh, the regulations that will be imposed by the county health department and with the state uh, liquor authority and we have been in ex extensive contact uh, with the state with the state liquor authority and through our state representatives uh, particularly assemblyman zabrowski who's been extraordinarily helpful uh, throughout this uh, process and we do expect that the state liquor authority will be uh, offering some further guidance from what they've told us in the coming weeks as to uh, the ability for uh, outside dining and, and uh, as it relates to people's liquor licenses and then finally, later on, you're going to hear from our uh, town planner, who's going to speak uh, to looking forward with our comprehensive plan. And it's super important because uh, when that discussion comes up later on, starting in June, we actually have four webinars uh, based on our comprehensive plan to be able to get uh, feedback. The comprehensive plan is the underpinning for our zoning code, and we're really going to be taking a hard look and hopefully uh, looking at some of these questions 
uh, that have been raised. Um, for example, drive-throughs. Uh, our our building and zoning code in New City is really kind of frowned on drive-throughs. It takes you know something like a pandemic to make us really kind of take a look at this and say you know maybe this is something that we have to uh, take a closer look at. Uh, the comprehensive plan uh, will take in feedback over these four webinars that will be taking place once a week, essentially in June, and that will provide uh, uh, feedback from the residents for us to be able to look at potential changes to our building and zoning code uh, that we would be enacting by uh, the end of the year. So um, there's an aggressive plan in place by the town board uh, and myself to be able to uh, look at ways in which we could uh, tweak our uh, building and zoning codes and uh, make some um, uh, immediate changes uh, that are going to assist our local retail establishments. Leslie, I'll turn it back over to you. So I just want to also, I mean, we're talking phase one, which hopefully we'll be able to open up in the next few days, uh, which is outlined on one of the previous slides. Um, but as we go forward and the governor has outlined what's allowed in phase two, phase three, and phase four, all businesses should be looking forward to um, and start planning now so that when the, when the governor says Rockland County can open phase two, uh, we should be able to hit the ground. You guys should be able to hit the ground and open immediately. So again, even though there's no guidance, the, the state has not issued any guidance uh, for phase two, three or four as of yet, I would go back to the templates that are on for phase one and start looking at things that you can do so that you will be prepared to open. I mean, I would anticipate, and I don't, you know, we don't, we're not in the governor's office, but I would anticipate that it would continue to be 50% maximum occupancy and social distancing requirements of six feet and providing uh, PPE equipment. So just think about how, when you open your business, where people might sit in an office and, and things like that. Start ordering plexiglass if that, if that would become necessary, um, think, things like that. So. Again, once we're where you're ready to open, we can open. Um, I, there's some questions I think I just have to figure out how to question. I think I just talked about the offices. I don't know. Um, again, like I said, the offices, uh, social. I, I, my my understanding is that the governor will require uh, social distancing within offices. Um, Again, as we, we navigate this, you know, unchartered ter territory, uh, you know, no one has all the answers. We're just doing our best. And the town certainly is here to, to help you reopen if we can answer as many questions uh, that, we, that we can uh, help you navigate the uh, governor's website because they change every single day. So uh, um, we're here to help you. And if there's any other questions, I'm happy to try and answer them now. Um, Eric, I'm going to pass it on to you now. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Leslie. So the Clarkstown Building Department <clears throat> is open doing business. We've been open since the beginning. Uh, we have our staff at 100%. We're actually pretty busy. Uh, we're still receiving, reviewing, and issuing building permits. Uh, we are doing some inspections. We're trying to keep it uh, to exterior inspections. We do uh, do some inspections in vacant buildings with the fire inspectors. So, so we're open. We're here to help. Uh, so, if anybody has any questions, they could always just give us a call or email us, and we'll certainly uh, try to help you out with that. So, when this thing does come on, hopefully within a few days when they open up construction or open up businesses. Uh, we're prepared to do anything that we need to do. We have the staff to do it. Uh, we could certainly help you out if you want to walk throughs, anything that you need, just give us a call. Uh, we have the fire inspector's office up and running at full capacity. And I think if there's any, any questions, just give us a call or if you have anything now. So we do, we do offer right now, the building department has uh, 
special event permits that are already on the books to help maybe some of these business owners. They're based on a four day, uh, twice a year schedule. You know, we would certainly try to accommodate any new businesses. Uh, like Leslie was saying before, the town board is looking into some expanded outdoor seating for restaurants. Uh, it would require a permit. We could uh, certainly work with anybody who's, who's looking into that. I think that would be quicker and easier than the tent event permit or the special event permit. Uh, there's also been some uh, some questions on some drive-in parking lot dining. We're also looking into that and trying to accommodate anything that we can with that. So we're here to help people uh, and we'll hope for the best. Great. Uh, th thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Eric. Um, you know, there's a number of uh, resources that are up there um, that uh, are industry specific. Um, you know, Eric, maybe you could just speak to those and uh, you'll pass it on to the next speaker. Uh, as, yeah, as far as this guidance and the protocol, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an ever changing thing. It seems to change every day. Uh, all these, all these uh, websites, they have great information on them. Uh, there's, there's also, I would imagine the uh, Rockland County Health Department is going to be very involved in the opening of, especially of restaurants. So any, uh, any guidance or resources you need, these are great. Or like I said, call, call us here at the building department or the town of Clarkstown. So at this time, maybe uh, Tom Morley from the Small Business Association can take it. Tom is muted. I'm not hearing him. Uh, we can uh, switch slides, please, if we may. The next slide. Okay, while we're uh, getting ready to switch the slide, um, there we go. Um, so a lot of this information has already been covered, but I, I'd like to just touch a little bit on some of the philosophies behind some of these things. The stuff in New York is all being data driven. I would encourage everybody to, and it was one of the links on the previous slide or two slides back, uh, is the New York State dashboard. And you can see where each region stands in terms of its specific measures and its specific performance. You'll know as soon as we know what's going on. In terms of the business precautions, um, you know, as Eric rightly pointed out, about the only constant right now is change. Everything is changing. Philosophically though, a lot of the business precautions are falling on the business owner. It's up to the business owner to provide the plan for how they're gonna keep their business safe and how they're gonna prevent spread. It's up to the business owner to provide the necessary uh, PPE, personal protective equipment whether it's masks, gloves, you know, whichever, you know, sneeze guards, that sort of thing. So keep in mind, that's how this is being configured. It's going to be important for each business owner to evaluate their specific workspace, their processes, and their particular obligations to employees and to their customers and how they will handle that in this really ever-changing environment. Um, there's a lot of recommended practices and there's many of them are listed on the state websites. The other place that I would suggest folks would go uh, is OSHA 3990. That's the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Uh, I realize that's not everybody's favorite place, but they do have a publication number 3990, which was recently done and is being updated from time to time, that goes through a lot of things in terms of how to do some of these protections. So it's kind of a good how-to guide uh, as you're doing stuff. Uh, if we could slide, please. I'd like to just go over kind of quickly a couple of these strategic considerations um, as we're going through um, this pandemic. COVID doesn't have an expiration date. We don't have a vaccine on a specific horizon. There's no solid end to this. There's an acceptance of a level of risk. One of the reasons I think it's important for people to keep that in mind is because that will continue to affect consumer behavior in a business-to-consumer and a business-to-business -business environment. 
how will your business address that concern of your customers and of your employees? Employees get fearful as well. On the customer facing side of things, how will you re-engage with your customers? How has your sales process been redefined? If you're accustomed to a lot of conversation with your, your customers in terms of, of options in the purchase process, that's probably not gonna happen anymore. So how will you redefine that sales process? How will you inform your customers of what their options and choices are in the different types of business? Um, you know, in a hardware store where in the past I might've gone in with some parts from you know, my sink, whatever, and said, hey, I need to fix this, you need to fix that, I could hand it to you, you could look at it, and so yeah, let's go back here, we'll find the right washer or whatever. How are you gonna redefine that process? Think of these things now before you unlock the doors and find out that you can't conduct business the way you had been conducting business. Some other things that I think business owners need to think about, your customers have been disconnected with you for about two and a half months in many cases. How are you gonna reconnect with your customers? It might sound goofy, but it's not. Customers are accustomed to a certain thing in a certain business. How will you reestablish that? How will you deal with simple impacts like customers now wearing masks? You can't see. Is the customer speaking? Is the customer smiling? Is the customer frowning? Is the customer looking unhappy? How will you and your employees re-engage? There's also gonna be a bunch of potentially radical changes in consumer spending patterns and choices. Yes, there'll be a short-term spike of pent-up demand. People have been locked up for two and a half months. They wanna get out, they wanna do this, they wanna do that. The weather has been getting better and better and better. And to see a little bit of evidence of that, just try to make a tea time at a golf course in Rockland County. You can't get it, they're booked. You say, well, how can they be booked? Well, because people wanna get out. Golf is one of the things they are allowed to do right now. So they're like, hey, I'm gonna go do this. So you're gonna get some pent up demand. But there'll be a rapid settling and the new spending plateaus are gonna be set. Many of those are likely to be lower than pre-COVID spending levels. People do have, in many cases, less money. We do have almost 30 million unemployed people in the country. This has economically impacted people in different ways. Some people very severely, some people less severely. There is less money in circulation, less money that people are spending. How will that affect your business? There are some business facing issues that I think we also need to take a look at. As you reopen your business, who and when will you be re-employing? Which employees you're calling back and in which sequence? Are they willing to come back? Do you have employees that are in a high risk category and perhaps unable to come back? There's different legal implications for that. You're gonna to have to maintain compliance with this ever-changing set of rules that are being put out by the state, the feds. I mean, Clarkstown's setting a very good attitude and I think a very good posture in terms of they want to cooperate with business, we have to do it right and they're trying to be responsive and be quick in their responses, which is a great thing. But what are you gonna need from the town? Do you need this permit? Do you need that acknowledgement? What is it you're gonna need? If you can't ask the question, they can't answer it. So be prepared to ask the questions. What disruption may have occurred in your supply or distribution chains? Have people found alternate sources of supply? One of the interesting occurrences so far in, in the pandemic has been the growth of generic brands at the expense of name brands for a couple of reasons. One was simple distribution. There were more generics on the shelf than there were name brands because the name brands left the shelves first. So people were in essence forced to get a generic brand, at which point they said, well, this seems as good as the next brand. Like really there's not much difference here. So it, the idea was reinforced that they don't need to pick a name brand. And then the generics were like, okay, we can get some opportunity for growth here. So they were pushing generics at the expense of brands. Distribution became more challenged. Brand distribution became more challenged. So what has happened in your particular business, in your particular supply chains and your distribution chains? And what are you gonna have to do to recapture customers who may have found that alternate supply, who may have found the generic brand and said, geez, I don't need to go you know, for the $5 coffee, the $3 coffee is fine. How is your business gonna address those changes? What is social distancing going to do in your business, in your particular physical business environment? 
will the consumers be more impatient? Will they need more reassurance? Will they need some more engaging reasoning in terms of why they're doing business with you and how they're doing business with you? How will you deal with the fact that some people are going to walk in your store and not have a mask? Yeah, it's difficult for you to be the enforcement agent. We can't be calling you know, as nice as they are and as quick as they are. We can't be calling the Clarkstown police every time somebody comes in without a mask. What's your policy going to be for that? You've got to think through some of these things. Uh, I'll try to whip quickly through some other concepts just to keep in mind as you plan for what your business is going to do. Prior to COVID-19, frictionless mobility was a distinct concept in spending. People could move around congested cities and main streets. There were shifting consumer mindsets where people were moving from ownership of things to access and experience. People were more willing to rent living space. Movement has now become much more limited. People are much more vigilant. Mobility is much more cautious. In the longer term, the focus is gonna be more locally connected solutions. If you think about just the changes in your home, has it not become more like homes were, let's say, the 1960s, where the home is more a center hub of life? And our social lives have become very virtual. Think of Friday night happy hours on Zoom or Google Hangouts. What's that going to do to your particular business? Consumers are seeking a holistic happy as they mind themselves. They were adapting to stimulation with outcome-based goods and experiences and services, how something made them feel. There's been a psychological rebalancing and a new normal where people are now doing more things to manage their anxiety. There's a higher focus on self-care. There's a higher focus on self-feeding. Think about one of the things that made it to the news when we were talking about how much food in this country was being destroyed. And people said, well, why are we dumping all that milk? Because it was destined for a commercial distribution chain to restaurants and other food service locations. Distribution chains are built around endpoints. Restaurants have been closed. Everything that would have been sold to a restaurant is going to be sitting there looking silly. Some of it could transition to sales through supermarkets, but not all of it. The packaging is different. The labeling is different. The requirements are different. How is that going to affect your brand and your business experience? How is that change in home going to change people's thoughts about your particular products and your particular service? Just one other thing that I'm going to kind of skip privacy because I, I don't think it pertains a lot to the stuff that we're doing here. but Globalization had been a very specific event in consumer spending and in business spending in recent years. People sought a sense of local individuality with a national identity, but global citizenship. Their consumption was keyed on, on local access to recognized international brands. For a simple example of that, think Aldi, Trader Joe's versus Grand Union and AMP. Where did our preferences shift to? The forced retreat from globalization lately has come with short-term hostility toward broader brands. A much greater support for local communities. People are much more loyal to their own immediate community. They're seeking less travel, less exposure. It's one thing to go from New City to Nanuet. It'll be another thing to go from New City to White Plains. So how people are going to make their choices, you have an opportunity as a business person to influence those choices. We definitely see a drive to what we call hyper-localization on the horizon, with people staying much more focused on staying in my community. Hey, I can get a meal here. I don't need to go somewhere else to get it. I can get my hardware in a hardware store here. I don't need to go somewhere else to get it. I can get my gas here. Yeah, maybe it's a little more expensive. People will prefer to do that. They want to build and maintain a world they can control. How can your business assist with that? Okay, we're going to skip environment. And if we can go to our next slide. The, these are some of the specific uh, pandemic-related resources from the Small Business Administration, the federal programs. Unfortunately, the economic injury disaster loan is not currently accepting applications. Reason being, they're running out of money. They will be refunded at some point. They're not currently 
they have money now that they're using for the applications in-house. If you're an agricultural business, the easy definition for that, if 50% or more of your revenue <clears throat> comes from growing things, you're agricultural. Um, horse operations, farms, things like that are agricultural businesses. They can actually apply right now. Um, they were, initially were not able to apply, so SBA has let them apply now just to give them a window to get into some of the resources. I don't generally defend what the federal government does, just I try to avoid that. Um, SBA has processed just over 2.88 million loans, almost 3 million loans in eight weeks. Were there some problems? Absolutely. Did people get messed up by some stuff? Absolutely. Did they have to change limits? Absolutely. But put it in some context, this is the only time in our nation's history when we've had the entire country as a declared disaster area. This isn't like Superstorm Sandy that hit the East Coast, hammered New York, skipped parts of New England, but some of New England got hit. It was a controllable, definable space. This isn't. This is the entire country. So everything that we've been facing as individual businesses, as individual citizens, that's what SBA has had to deal with in the federal government in terms of the scope of this issue. It's been huge. The Paycheck Protection Program is currently open and there's still plenty of money in there. There's actually just over a hundred and some odd billion dollars in there right now. Um, those applications are moving fairly quickly. Right now, generally we're seeing three to seven days on Paycheck Protection Loan programs. Oddly enough, if you were slow to apply for a Paycheck Protection Loan, in some senses, you're better off. If you applied early in the program, one of the restrictions in the program is you have eight weeks to use the money, eight weeks from the date that you get the money, um, from the time you receive the money, uh, is when you have to begin using it. For some folks, they're going to run out of time before they actually reopen, which is going to raise some other issues for them. If you have not as yet applied for paycheck protection, I would give serious thought to it. Essentially, what the federal government will do is give you the money to pay your payroll for eight weeks. And then they will forgive that loan if you use the money in accordance with the rules of the program, which is basically that 75% of the money has to be used on payroll. The other 25% can be used on mortgage interest, rental, lease payments, things of that nature. It's not a perfect solution. But it's a pretty good one for you know for certain businesses, so give it some thought. Express loans, a standard SBA express loan is still being made. Uh, that's actually done between you and your bank. Um, some banks are not participating in the express loans right now because they're too busy dealing with other SBA things like the paycheck protection and whatever. Uh, SBA 504 program is open with extremely attractive long-term financing rates for real property. 504 is generally limited to buildings, machinery, things of that nature. Um, so um, if you're in the process of doing that, the 504 program is open. They're taking applications. Money is available. Um, slide, please. And while we're talking about research, I should also mention, uh, by the way, SBDC is right over at Rockland Community College. We do answer specific questions, help with specific research, things of that nature. Um, you know, and our contact information will be up uh, on one of the slides coming up. Absolutely feel free to call us. You know, we'll be happy to see if we can't answer your questions um, you know, for your particular business. So uh, the next slide does have some additional resources for folks. Um, the OSHA publications, uh, Centers for Disease Control, is there a lot of information out there? Absolutely. Do you need to take some time to digest it? Absolutely. Read it, understand it. If you have concerns, call the town. The town's got tremendous resources to help you out with it. Call the chambers. They can help you. Call us. We can help you understand the information. And get in the habit of checking the New York Forward website pretty much on a daily basis to see exactly where the state's measurements are and exactly what the state is doing. Um, the business affirmation submission form, that link is on there as well. You have to, before you open, you have to acknowledge that you have read and understand the guidelines. Is the state going to come down and inspect every business? No. Is the town going to come by and inspect every business? No, they can't. However, it's kind of like the workman's comp posters and things like that. You have to have it. You have to have it posted. 
if you think through the process, it won't take you very long to do it. The form online is fillable. You fill it out, print it, put a thumbtack in it, do your attestation, and you're good to go. So I encourage everybody to do that. It's way easier than dealing with it afterwards. Um, and you know, with that, if you have any questions, we're happy to, you know, we're here to serve the public and happy to help you guys out. And now we're gonna hear from uh, Susan Faris from the Nanuet Chamber of Commerce. Susan. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, obviously, Town of Clarkstown for hosting this webinar. Uh, we couldn't do it alone. We always can't do it without you. Um, thank you again for everybody who's joining us. I see we have a nice uh, crowd of attendees. Um, just so you know, we will on our website and uh, we will email out the information to see this and hear this again. I think um, George said it's going to be available. Um, just want to let you guys know that we are here to support our businesses. We're always here to support our community. We've been doing everything we can. As soon as we heard of the COVID shutdowns coming, we reached out to our businesses asking um, to submit um, information that they have on their businesses, who is staying open, for those allowed to stay open, obviously, and how we can help them. Um, as far as getting ready for the next stages of opening, that's um, where we're here for you also. We um, have posted on our website, whether you're a business or a member or non-business member, whether you're open. So please share with us your logos, any links, any calendars of information, any information to put on our calendar. Um, we're also asking for you to share a video, a short one minute video um, of your business. Um, stand outside, let us know what times you're open, give us some information, we'll post your menus, whatever we need to do, we are there to help you. Um, as far as the uh, COVID-19 resource pages, um, whatever we get available to us, we are posting. We do have on our website a link to, and our Facebook, uh, all the COVID-19 resources. So if you have updates and the town get updates and we get those updates from the health department, we've been posting that. So please go on there and you can get that information. Um, there's been a lot of information today and we know that you guys will come back to us with questions. So please do, we're here for you. Um, in conjunction with the Nanuet and Beyond and uh, the donations we've been receiving for our thank you lawn signs for our essential workers and healthcare workers. I think you can see one behind me. I think it's in my office. Um, you probably have seen them all over town. Uh, many uh, communities are putting them up. We have been using these donations to provide food, meals, sandwiches, ice cream trucks to the hospitals, it's been, we've been getting an overwhelming response and we thank you guys, we thank the community for helping us do that. Uh, we are, we'll continue to do that. We are still selling our signs. You can go to our website or our Facebook and email us and ask us information on that and we will get them to you. For those of you that know me and saw me out there delivering, if you couldn't reach us to pick up the signs, we brought them to you and we will continue to do that because it's important to us. Um, Again, we want to thank our businesses. I know there's a lot of information coming out to you, but we also have a lot of people on our board that can help you. Our, our chamber board is made up an amazing group of people that consists of banking, um, computer services, web designs, PR people. We have construction and real estate. There's so many of us that can help you. We are willing to help you. If we can't help you, we will go out and reach out to those who can help you. So please reach out to us. Um, Sadly, for our community, we had to cancel our street fair, and that was crushing, but we know that our community is strong. We will come back as soon as we're allowed to host an event. We will be hosting. We will be working closely with the town of Clarkstown to do that, and their support has been terrific, and we thank you for being there for us. Um, as part of the relationship we have with Clarkstown, we also have a great relationship with our school district. We are here for them and we have been there for them and we are helping them work through their graduation process and their end of year ceremonies. The um, information that we obtain will go on our Facebook page. We continue to have our junior chamber of commerce that we formed working with our school district and with us to post any events and get out there in our community to get you information that is needed. Please check out their Facebook page, junior chamber of commerce. Their information is important and it's amazing what they've done for our community. Um, again, we're here for you. We are a small town with a bigger heart now than ever. Uh, we are supporting our local communities. We are also working closely with our neighboring chambers. And I will let Roxy from the New City Chamber take that over and she will explain more about that. Roxy? 
Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Roxy from the New City Chamber. Uh, on behalf of all of us um, uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, and I know I speak um, for Nanny Wet as well, we wholeheartedly thank you guys for putting this webinar together. The town of Clarkstown has, as usual, gone above and beyond. Um, our communication and our relationship is fantastic, and we have been really working hard to try to help our small businesses um, navigate this pandemic that we're living through. Um, it's heartwarming, and um, instead of dividing and conquering, we have band together, and we will make this happen. Um, I'm not going to repeat what Susan said because she said it so eloquently, but we feel the same way here in New City. Um, we have posted resources uh, for on our website and also on our Facebook page that include um, the SBA and federal loan information uh, available to uh, our businesses and employees. We've posted uh, such things as best practices for reopening, a call for volunteers for our Meals, and, uh, Meals on Wheels and People to People programs, uh, safety information that was put out from Clarkstown Police Department, also our direct links to restaurant members and sharing the restaurant Facebook posts from our, uh, our chamber members. We've been promoting COVID-19 webinars for businesses, sharing social media photos of members doing volunteer work and, and lending helpful hands, and um, sharing all kinds of uh, polls that have come out through our state and our governor. I think most importantly what we did is that we sent out a seven question survey to our small businesses and we received a total of 22 responses. And I'm just going to recap uh, the results of that survey. And it is a majority of our small business community has been detrimentally impacted by the shutdown, um, are temporarily closed, but they are hopeful that they'll be able to reopen um, as soon as we get the go-ahead for phase one. Um, and they're hoping that uh, it doesn't last too long, obviously. Only one business responded that the opening is contingent upon a supplier, which is what Tom Morley was talking about earlier in his presentation. Most uh, are undecided about preparedness for the upcoming months uh, due to not a lot of accurate information they feel that was out there, but after this presentation, which was chock full of helpful, amazing information, I'm sure that uh, a lot of questions have been cleared up. And those who have applied uh, for the PUA, only two um, uh, business owners have received financial assistance. So I guess uh, that is a huge concern for them. Um, they are hanging on by the skinny skin skin, but um, again, the prevailing thought from the questions was that they're hopeful and um, we are here as a chamber and as a town to um, help them get up and running. <clears throat> there, um, there also, um, I think we should, I should touch back and say what Tom had mentioned earlier about local, the, the focus has gone from a more global um, or out of the town or even out of the county to other places uh, to go to. But uh, I think one of my mantras that uh, ring long and true and hard is uh, think local, shop local, dine local, right? So it starts with the think local uh, premise, okay? Um, if we could continue to help our businesses keep steady and our community to keep steady on thinking locally, we can get uh, creative juices uh, going about how to generate, uh, you know, revenue and business for our local, uh, our local businesses without them having to look elsewhere, without our customers having to look uh, elsewhere. Um, as one of my friends say, let's not allow a good emergency to go to waste. So let's turn the minds and thinking of our small businesses um, into a better place um, and our customers and our patrons and our community. It's na now is the time. We have to seize the time to think on a local level as we forge ahead into uh, reentry. Um, 
most importantly, also, I'd like to say, like Susan had mentioned, um, we work together, the chamber, the chambers. We have a chamber alliance. We're here for each other. We're in constant contact. We're concerned not only about the town of Clarkstown, but for our other neighboring towns. Very, very, very important. Um, we are here for our small businesses, and where our chamber is, our chambers together are here for you. So please do not hesitate to reach out to, um, reach out to us. Um, my contact information is uh, listed here, uh, my email address and my phone number, my cell phone number. And I encourage all of you to take it down, note it, and use it um, anytime because this is very important and we want to be here for our businesses and our community. Um, and yes, I'm going to repeat what Susan said about the street fair. Unfortunately, our street fair has been canceled uh, for June, but we are really looking forward and hopeful that perhaps in September or October, we could uh, organize um, and go forth with our, our other street fair that has um, that's on the calendar. Um, stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you to everybody. Happy and safe um, re-entry into phase one. Thanks, guys. Joe, I think you might be up next. And uh, before Joe goes, again, I just want to let everybody know that we have posted uh, the presentation. If you look, it's under handouts uh, in the column to the right. So you have all of the links. The presentation is chock full of, of links to the New York Forward website, uh, to all the different resources that have been spoken of. Uh, a number of the presenters are trying to answer the questions as they're appearing on the screen. Uh, in the remaining minutes, we're going to have Joe Simos, our town planner, and really kind of give a little bit of a forward look. Again, because we're in a, a unique period of time, uh, the comprehensive plan is the underpinning, uh, underpinning of your zoning code. And uh, one of the things that uh, we're looking to do is make sure that we're trying to be as business friendly as possible to our business community. And obviously there's new realities as Tom and a number of the other presenters have spoken of that, that uh, we're experiencing with the pandemic. And so, uh, it's it's uh, fortuitous that uh, every 10 years you redo your comprehensive plan, and we are now starting that process with a series that were supposed to be public workshops uh, that would be ha taking place scattered around the community. They're now virtual workshops that will be taking place. Uh, but uh, we're looking for feedback and uh, input uh, because uh, this will help us uh, with the comprehensive plan and will help us, frankly, to take a look at things like um, the specific aspects of our zoning and building codes. Uh, so uh, uh, Joe is going to speak to that. He's going to speak to some of the other resources that are available. And then when we're finished, um, we'll try and take any questions uh, that uh, you might have. And so I'll turn it over to Joe Simos, our town planner. Thank you, George. Um, if you can go to the next slide. So um, what, we're gonna, uh, what I'd like to cover is actually some of the resources that the planning department has available. Um, really planning is divided into short-term planning and long-term planning. And on the short term, it's your basic applications that we process every day. Um, so we've put a lot of uh, resources into our, uh, our web page, which you see on the screen here. Um, I'm gonna, afterwards, I'm gonna go through um, the actual web page and, and show you around. Um, but we have all our applications online. You can actually see every project that's before the planning board or the zoning board. Um, all the materials are there, the same materials that the planning board and zoning board are looking at that we have large, you know, large format maps and, and, and um, environmental information. It's all there. Um, so we've been working basically by teleconference. The planning board and the zoning board have had uh, several teleconferences um, and then we have the technical advisory committee. Um, so all the staff to the planning board also working by teleconference. So the town engineer or, the, or, or someone from the engineering department, the building department, the planning department, and the town attorney's office reviews every application that comes in um, and, and basically gives advice uh, to applicants on how to meet all the criteria for getting in front of the planning board. We give um, we give information about the zoning, what's allowed, what's not allowed in a particular area, um, and how to how to how, the easiest way from get to get from point A to point B and actually get an approval um, and get a building permit and actually construct what it is that you're proposing. 
So I'll go over the, the, the planning department webpage, and as the supervisor mentioned, you can see it on the next slide. Um, we are embarking on updating our comprehensive plan from 2009, um, and it is a unique opportunity, as, as, um, as the supervisor mentioned. Um, we um, were looking to get input um, on that vision for the, for the future, um, and that is the underpinning for our zoning. And in light of what's happening all around us, I think we're going to have some very interesting um, you know, feedback, some interesting comments from the public and from the businesses about what to do with our zoning code. Um, to that end, if you can go to the next slide, we have had, um, as, as the supervisor mentioned, we've set up four teleconferences, um, which will also be broadcast on Facebook Live. Um, so similar to the Teletown that, that, that George does every once in a while, um, informing people about what's going on with, with, uh, with COVID. Um, we're going to be, you're going to be getting calls, um, or you can actually call that number to make sure that you're, you're part of the discussion. Um, and we'll have one uh, council member each with George on each one of these dates, basically discussing the comprehensive plan and getting feedback, getting comments um, back to us on what you want to see changed in the code. Um, with that, I'm actually going to ask for control of the screen, and I'm going to bring you to the planning department webpage and show you some links and resources that I've that I've kind of gone over. So let me just see if I can grab the screen here. Sorry. There we go. So you should be seeing my screen. Um, and as I mentioned, um, we have all of our downloadable forms in order if you want to need to apply to the planning board for an expansion of a, of a building. Um, but what's interesting is that we have this kind of interactive program here that basically shows every project that is being undertaken in the town. We launched this about a year or so ago. Um, so I'm just going to highlight um, what we have here. A very a recent project we actually just had had it on in front of the planning board last night um, Volkswagen of Nanuet so you can see the map actually zooms in to the property you can see it in this aerial um, all the information is online you have a narrative that actually describes from the applicant what it is 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 being proposed here so um, you can actually this is the old Bob's furniture so it's being proposed for a Volkswagen dealership. Um, and you actually have the site plan um, all right here available for people to look at. So it's useful for the applicant um, to be able to have this. It's useful for the town, for the planning board. They can look at this while they're actually having their meeting um, virtually. And also for the public, they get to go in here, they see and, and hopefully get some of their questions answered before even coming to a meeting. Um, if they're a neighbor, they can see where the parking is, where the landscaping is, and um, and using this map, they can maybe see where their house is in relation to where the project is. So we found this very helpful. Um, like I said, we've been using this for a while, but it's become kind of a mainstay under the, the, the conditions that we're working in right now. Um, the other uh, the other location, the other uh, link that I want to direct people to is the comprehensive plan update. So this is this went live as of yesterday. Um, I'm encouraging everyone to, to go to the to this website and to the link. Um, we've designed this in-house. Um, so you come in here, you do have to register to leave comments, specific comments. Um, and I'll just show you what I'm what I'm talking about. You can always send an email to our um, the comp plan 2020 and clarkstown.org if you just have a specific comment but we have a, an interesting interactive map um, and top of the line top of the map there's seven topics um, economic development environmental resources health safety and welfare housing historic and cultural resources recreation parks and open space and transportation so we have top billing is economic development and when you actually you come in here, and we have all of our non-residential zones, so all of our commercial, industrial, uh, office zones highlighted here. 
you can actually zoom in. When you click on it, it gives you the zone um, and the type of zone that it is. You can take this information and actually go to our, our web page uh, again and, and look up the zoning and what it means. But for the, for the comprehensive plan, this is an opportunity for um, people to actually make comments about, about their particular business or people can make comments about your, your particular business. Um, so in here, you can actually add a pin and make a comment. Um, maybe you even have a comment that has to do with transportation. Maybe the, you know, 303, we've had um, a lot of issues with 303. We've worked with the, uh, the DOT and the local transportation council to fund um, several hundred thousand dollar grant to study 303 and Route 304. Um, but you can make comments, you know, it, depending on the theme um, and, and different, um, you know, and, on different maps. Um, so, you know, we're, we're excited about this. This is a, a, a lot easier way to, to gather comments. Um, ordinarily, we would have had one-on-one -on -one workshops. We would have held four of them um, in different parts of the town. And I would have rolled out a paper map like this and we would have drawn all over it and gathered comments. Um, but like this, you can actually show comments uh, here and other people can read them and they can, you know, they can provide their opinion on a particular suggestion. So it's very interactive. It's pretty easy to use. The only thing is you do have to register um, in order to um, make a comment on this kind of a map because we want to, you know, have some, um, you know, um, continuity or, or, or responsibility on, on, on the comments. So we do have to kind of manage this site. It's almost like it, it's open-ended. Um, so you can see here, if I try to add a pin, it's asking me to sign on. So it's a simple process. You come in with a username and password, and then you're able to make comments, and other people can make comments. Um, with that, I just want to emphasize that we are having, um, again, the teleconferences. Um, there are four dates. Postcards are being mailed out, I believe, today to every address in the town of Clarkstown. So whether you're a business or a resident, you should be getting, um, you should be getting a postcard. We have flyers uh, that we've created that we're going to have the different organizations, the chambers and the civic organizations, any, any, any organization we can think of, we're gonna be giving them the information for this website and for these, um, for these uh, teleconferences. So we're going, um, you know, June 1st, uh, June 4th, I'm sorry, uh, at seven o'clock. Um, we'll have our first one. These are all at seven, uh, June 4th, June 11th, June 15th, and June 22nd. Um, if you go in here, you'll actually get a little more information. Um, you know, like I said, it's a, you can also go on Facebook Live. The phone number here is the same no matter which one uh, that you join. Um, we did organize this by ward, but you're welcome to go to any ward um, you know, if you're in Congress and you want to listen in or, or make comments about New City, that's perfectly fine. You can go and, and attend all four of them if, if you'd like. Um, we're just going to have uh, the supervisor and the councilman for each ward um, attend each, each uh, teleconference. So um, with that, again, I want to just emphasize that this, this is the underpinning of the zoning. And as, as uh, the supervisor mentioned, I think there's a lot, um, you know, that they, we're going to get comments that are very different and colored um, based on the crisis that we're going through. And, and he mentioned about the, the drive throughs, which has always been a bone of contention in, on, on Main Street, but it really is something to think about um, in this day and age, whether, whether at least some limited number of, of drive throughs should be allowed. Um, and there's other, you know, I'm sure the business community has a lot of other ideas. We'd love to hear it. Um, and like I said, it's not, you're not just limited to this particular map. Maybe you have a question about parks or an idea about transportation um, or, or, or police. Um, we're pretty, we think that we've covered every theme and every aspect of the comprehensive plan, but that's why we uh, also allow general comments. If there's something that's not covered here that doesn't fall under one of these categories, let us know. And, and we might create another category and another map for people to, uh, to leave their comments. 
So with that, I think I pass it back to uh, the supervisor to continue with the webinar. So uh, thank you, Joe. And I want to thank again all the presenters. You know, we're we're essentially done presenting the information. We'll we've got a number of questions that we've been trying to uh, answer. Um, as you've seen, st staff uh, has been diligently answering the questions that are up. Uh, the presentation is available. Just to emphasize again what uh, Joe or Tom Planner had said, um, you, you might find it odd we're talking about reopening, but then we kind of roll in towards the end with the comprehensive plan. And again, because it's so critically important, because the comprehensive plan, as I said, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, there isn't a day that goes by where somebody, a business owner, isn't asking, well, why does the town do this? Or why can't I have this type of use or operation for my business? Or you know, how come one side of Main Street allows apartments over it and another, the other side of Main Street doesn't? Uh, and again, so this is the opportunity for business owners and for residents to be able to provide information that's going to help with the town going forward for planning. I do anticipate and we do envision that there will be some changes that will be taking place in our building and zoning codes. And I think those changes are going to probably be um, uh, more nuanced and dramatic based upon the crisis that we are currently in and going through. Uh, again, there's nothing like a pandemic to really make you rethink a number of things. And looking at, just as Joe mentioned, uh, we have a prohibition against new drive-throughs along Main Street in our Hamlet Center zoning. That's something that, uh, you know, frankly, uh, we're gonna have to take another look at. There's been some questions about, uh, you know, we think that uh, retail is gonna change, it's not gonna die. Uh, but are there different types of uses that we need to consider in some of our commercial and retail zones or different types of nuances that we have to put into our uh, into our code that will allow some more flexibility and greater flexibility? Uh, we've had recently a number of uh, realtors that, spe that specialize uh, um, in the residential sector, and we've had them actually get together and make some suggestions, you know, particularly as it relates to our over 55 and senior zoning. So um, again, we're using this as an opportunity because you as a business owner really can provide some feedback and some information. Uh, you as a Clarkstown resident can provide feedback and information that can have a, a significant impact and help the town really look at some of these policy issues. So with that, I know that there were several questions. I'm gonna ask Leslie Kahn, our town attorney, uh, there were about four questions that were actually emailed to us from the chambers before and a number of them were already answered. Um, and I know Eric, we're gonna ask you to weigh in on one the one question about signs that was uh, that was sent in to us. And Leslie, I think that uh, um, maybe you could just quickly go through those four questions from the chambers uh, that were sent in ahead of time. And if there's any additional questions people have, please type them in and we'll try and get to them right now. Um, and um, We'll we'll take the next five to seven minutes to uh, answer any of those questions. Leslie? So the first question we received is that if a business, uh, if one of the employees tests positive for COVID, what is the protocol? Do they need to close? The answer is they, the business does not need to close if they can cordon off the area of where the employee uh, worked. So what that means is if you can cordon off like an employee's workstation, uh, that has to be cordoned off for at least 24 hours uh, without cleaning it, open windows and doors to get circulation in. After 24 hours, then the, the business may go in and, and clean it. Uh, if the employees did not have contact with anybody else, no other employees need to uh, go home. If it cannot be cordoned off, to clean, then the business must close for 24 hours until at which time they can go in and clean. Uh, in terms of quarantining other employees, if I would refer to the CDC guidelines on that, uh, if nobody's showing symptoms and they have not tested positive, again, I refer to CDC guidelines, but the employees can return to work with the proper safety uh, equipment. Uh, I believe uh, our building inspector touched on question number two, enough inspectors. The town will provide uh, inspections on an as-needed basis. We do have staff to do all the inspections necessary. Um, the third question we said, when can we start preparing to open our businesses? I believe I already touched on this. Uh, even if you're not a phase one business, phase two, three, or four, such as restaurants, uh, they should start planning now to reopen 
uh, when the governor gives the green light that you can open. So again, start preparing your safety plans we, um, and, and think about outside the box how you might be able to separate tables, uh, your staff in terms of proper getting the proper face coverings and gloves, uh, hand sanitizers, um, bathrooms. You might only want to have one stall available at a time so that one person goes in and out. Um, you know, preparing signs for curbside pickup only, things like that. So I would start preparing all that now. And I believe Eric answered question number four with signs. So I don't want to profess that I'm professional on the sign code. Uh, Eric, if you just, if you want to uh, uh, reemphasize anything on the on that sign question, uh, if there's a change in the business format, um, if there's a change in the business format or, um, you know, what do they need to do to change their signage? <clears throat> so a sign, any new sign would require approval from the Architectural Historic Review Board. Uh, it's a, about a two week process as an application. We'll certainly try to accommodate any business that one does, that want, <clears throat> excuse me, that wants to do it. We would also need any additional information for the fire inspectors uh, to just update their records. So uh, it's not, that big of a deal and we'll certainly work with any businesses who want to do that or have to do that. Right. And there are just a couple of questions that uh, haven't been answered in the column, so we'll just go right right through those. So when is New York State expected to have additional guidelines for hair and salons? We asked this uh, uh, repeatedly. I'm going to turn it over to our, uh, to our attorneys. I can tell you there was a comment earlier that I kind of chuckled. Uh, uh, you kind of seen this all straight on, but if you turn sideways, I haven't really had my hair cut. I, my wife nags me about it all the time because I'm probably going to have to break down. I know that a number of our town supervisors have joked because uh, one of our town supervisors, Howie Phillips, has actually gone into the uh, hairstyling business uh, with um, uh, actually taking care of his wife's hair. And I actually may have to break down and have my wife take care of mine. I'm, but uh, we're hopeful. Uh, nobody here has uh, had the benefit of being able to go for, uh, uh, to a barber or to a hair salon. Uh, we ask every day, uh, every single day, I am on a, a, a conference call with our uh, other four town supervisors. Uh, we've got an excellent working relationship. The other towns have been sharing an awful lot of information, uh, resources, uh, asking each other questions, and providing information and questions forward. So whenever we get questions of this nature, uh, my, myself and my staff will typically uh, uh, immediately forward those and ask questions of the uh, representatives from the governor's office. Uh, we're on a daily phone call to five town supervisors with the uh, uh, staff from the region with the governor's office. And uh, we're frequently going through Assemblyman Zabrowski's uh, office to be able to uh, have him help and assist with also bringing questions up, up, uh, up the line. So as it relates to a lot of these issues, uh, the problem that we have is we're asking the questions and we're not necessarily getting uh, uh, the answers back or the guidance that we would particularly like, uh, we're often hear the response, um, you know, that will be forthcoming. And it's, it's problematic uh, it, to the extent that you want to be able to plan and, and move forward. The good news is, is that uh, near, uh, uh, hair salons and uh, barbers, uh, the, the governor clearly announced and they have moved that into phase two. Uh, so we know that that's now in phase two. Uh, so that's a positive thing. There's another question that was up here about uh, pools and camps. Again, we have no guidance on pools and camps, and uh, we're waiting to uh, waiting to hear back as to uh, what guidance is going to be offered. Will these even be allowed to open? Uh, already, we're in a position as the town where, uh, in order for us to be able to open, uh, we would have uh, we're well behind what we would need to do. Uh, also, uh, some concern if lifeguards would even be available. So uh, we're still waiting for some additional guidance on that. And at some point, if it doesn't come, the town is going to have to make a decision regardless. Uh, we're certainly hopeful that we're going to be able to do something. But again, just like the businesses, the towns are also kind of at the mercy of this. The very specific and direct question is asked, what do we foresee as the tax consequences of the pandemic on taxes for the county and the towns? I can't speak for the other towns and I can't speak for the county. I can speak uh, for my town and the town of Clarkstown. And I can tell you that we're doing everything we can. Uh, we're moving forward with uh, we're already looking for savings in the current budget. Uh, one good uh, piece of uh, news or two good pieces of news that will be helpful uh, in the short term 
Um, the first quarter of sales tax revenue for uh, Rockland County and for the town of Clarkstown was up approximately 10%, um, you know, um, which was a very positive thing. Uh, the way in which the sales tax quarter is done it, uh, is December, January, February. So the um, first quarter of sales tax revenue uh, for the town of Clarkstown was actually up about $95,000. So we're, we're looking at some of the uh, weaknesses in the town budgets. It's really going to be as, as it relates to the sales tax dollars that will be coming forward from the county. The county has much greater exposure in terms of the percentage of their budget that's derived from sales tax. And we know that with the first quarter being up 10%, that's great. Uh, but we also know from uh, as of about a week ago, uh, we were informed uh, by the state controller's office that sales tax um, was essentially down about 31% for the second quarter. So uh, that's a problem. Uh, we know that that's gonna have an impact on the county and on the towns, um, but we're doing everything we can to ensure that we uh, can find savings in the current budget. Uh, hiring freezes will be, uh, will be forthcoming, I would imagine, in a lot of locations. Uh, and the other one good piece of news is that um, the town of Clarkstown had a very good positive year within the past year um, with, um, with our rateables. And we actually have added over $30 million in value to our tax roll, uh, and where we think that will end up after the, um, uh, the tax grievance process, which is taking place right now. Uh, we think that uh, dollar-wise, that will result in approximately six uh, to $700,000 in new tax revenue. Uh, that certainly will help with some of the shortfall that may be coming forward. Um, so there is some good news, but there's obviously some, some real uh, significant concerns, and uh, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that uh, we can mitigate uh, whatever we can so that it doesn't get passed on to uh, our businesses and our residences. Um, um, I'm gonna ask um, about the rehire. Are we required to rehire folks who've been laid off? Uh, Tom Morley, if you could, uh, since that's more of an SBA, I think with the PPP uh, criteria, could you please speak to that? Sure. Um, there is a requirement in the Paycheck Protection Program to rehire uh, to a, a level not exceeding a 25% cut. So you've got to rehire 75 up, you know, 75 percent of the people. There is, however, no connection between the number and the name. So if you need to hire differently than you had, that's acceptable as well. If you've got employees that, for whatever reason, are choosing not to return to work, just be sure you document that. And it will. So if you call up and say, hey, "Tom, uh, you can come back to work next Wednesday," if I say, "Hey, dude, I'm not coming back to work. I'm still scared," as long as I provide you some sort of documentation, that'll come off both sides of the equation for you. So yes, you've got to rehire as many people as you can, uh, and you have to hit at least 75% of your pre of your application level. Great, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Um, there, there was another question as well about uh, time between phases, and we can offer some clarification as it relates to this. Um, initially, it was really believed that when you started phase one, uh, that you had to go through that for two weeks, a uh, 14-day period, and then you'd move it to phase two, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have received some guidance from the governor's office and through uh, our local assemblymen that uh, there is not a hard and fast two-week rule in between. It's when metrics can be met, um, and uh, that will be determined by the control board and will be determined by, you know, frankly, uh, through the process that's put in, been put in place as metrics are met. Um, so as you know, uh, phase one is, is uh, Leslie went over, and in the slide you can see the various phases. So uh, we're not necessarily talking about eight weeks for everything to open up. Uh, could be it could be eight weeks. It could be less. It could be more. Uh, let's pray, you know, God, that it's not uh, not anywhere near that long. But uh, there is no hard and fast two week rule in between phases. That's something that uh, there has been some uh, additional clarification upon. And then I think um, um, finally, people are asking where the um, where is the presentation. If you look on the right of your screen, it's, I'm looking at my screen. You see all the attendees. Um, we had about 120 attendees on this webinar. Um, and if you look underneath there, uh, there's a listing of who the names are uh, of the different attendees. And you'll see a link that says to handouts. It's reopening Clarkstown webinar PDF. Um, it has the entire presentation. And throughout that presentation, the hyperlinks 
to uh, every one of the, uh, the New York Forward and to all the other resources that were discussed. Let me conclude since we've answered all the questions. Um, I want to thank all of our presenters. I want to thank the uh, Chambers of Commerce and Tom Morley. Um, I can't emphasize enough the wonderful working relationship between uh, our Chambers of Commerce with town government. Uh, you know, I meet with them regularly. They do some incredible work. Uh, they really were very modest, both Susan and Roxy, uh, about presenting some of their efforts that they've been involved with on behalf of local businesses. They're exceptional advocates for the business community within Clarkstown, and uh, they'll continue to be your voice. And you can contact them, and business owner to business owner, uh, they have folks that are willing uh, to, you know, kind of lend an ear and also talk about what they've done. Um, every business is going to have to make that affirmation that they've read, as Tom and Leslie indicated, uh, what the guidelines are. So please familiarize yourself with the guidelines. We are telling businesses now, and we'll tell you on this webinar, um, go in and read those guidelines and anticipate that the opening phases for phase two, three, and four, um, the, the additional information will be, coming, will be forthcoming, but anticipate uh, that th that level of detail information is what the state is, is going to uh, be requiring. Start putting together your plan now. Uh, don't wait. And start to look at uh, what you need to do to make sure that your environment is safe. So if it's an office, try and make sure that uh, you can uh, engage in social distancing. Uh, what you're going to do to be able to have relevant PPP, uh, PPEs available. Uh, what you're going to do in terms of cleaning schedules and things of that nature. Uh, what environmental modifications you may have to do. And it could be as simple as just plexiglass uh, barriers or trying to move people around um, or, you know, coming up with a plan where some people are going to continue to work remotely. And then I think finally the other issue that we're trying to tell businesses is look, look to reinvent yourself. Uh, there's really going to be opportunities here uh, that uh, maybe there are different types of services that you're going to uh, be uh, providing or you're going to be providing your services in a different way and know that you have the pledge of the town of Clarkstown that we will work with you. Um, our uh, uh, building department will ensure that they are making, uh, making uh, inspectors available to the extent that you need inspectors available. Uh, and we are not going to be taking a punitive approach. We want to get our businesses open. We want people to be safe and we want people to make sure that they are, uh, are able to uh, not only survive but thrive in this economy. And I do think that uh, um, we'll make sure that there will be the relevant resources available. Again, I want to thank all of our presenters. I want to thank the Chambers, Tom Morley. I want to thank Eric, uh, our building inspector, Leslie, our town attorney, Joe, our town planner. Again, I want to thank Rob Alberti, who put together the presentation for my office, Lauren Daly, and all of my other staff who assisted, and our IT department. This went relatively seamless. Uh, and um, that's because we literally had our IT folks running from office to office, uh, really trying to put everything together. This presentation will will be uh, available on a, the town a YouTube uh, uh, channel. Uh, it'll be uh, links into uh, our website. It will also be sent out through my e-newsletter, which goes out to 16,000 people um, every Friday. Uh, and we'll also be taking a version of this and putting it up on our public access channel. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns or comments, if you need any assistance, uh, know that the Town of Clarkstown is here. Contact my office at 639-2050, the Town Attorney's Office, 639-2060, the Building Department at 639-2100, or the, um, um, uh, the Town uh, uh, Planning Department at uh, 639-2070. Again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you to all the presenters. This is going to conclude our webinar. And uh, uh, if you need any assistance, please reach out. Thank you, everyone.